I'm going to the top, but I've been to the bottom already I lost everything I ever had, I was at rock bottom I was running with the devil, now I'm back up And my foot up on the pedal, and when it won't stop Like I'm running for metal, I'm giving you the new me Cause the old me was the me, so I left him in the ground with the shovel Now I'm on autopilot, autopilot, autopilot I got goals, I can't afford to go back down that dark road now I'm on autopilot, autopilot, autopilot. Auto I was rolling, drawing, and hanging, holding on to something, grabbing, pulled me right back. Even though God has determined our destiny, sometimes we make decisions that put us in a different position, that push us and sway us in different positions. And we have to deal with the consequences of the decisions that we make. And so we must understand that, that our decisions is going to determine some of the destiny that we're going to encounter. So if you are destined to be great, understand you're going to have some great pain involved. There's going to be some great difficulties ahead in becoming great because you cannot become great without going through something great to understand what greatness is. And even though it's painful, even though it's difficult, you can still make it through. So one of the first needs to overcoming your destiny is desire. You've got to have a desire. You've got to desire what you want, and it must be a passionate desire. You can't just desire it and then sit back and wait for it to happen. You got to make it happen. So you got to fulfill that desire at all costs. On it talks about each day of the week. You know how Mondays we wake up sort of heavy. Most people say I don't like Mondays, but why? When it was a gift from God, why do we shame Monday and love so much on Friday? When Friday comes, we're in such a rush to get through with Friday so that we can get to Saturday, and then Saturday happens, and we're so full of something to do on Saturday that we don't even get to enjoy. So this book just encourages you to slow down for a little bit and actually speak things into existence. But you can only speak things into existence when you're aware of what you're already thinking, right? And so Bishop said, desire, determine, and decision. I have my own method, it's called the three sources of power. And mine are thoughts, words, and choices. I had to write them down because they emulate so much, they're not even for desire, thoughts, determination, you gotta speak it, right? And then decisions, you have to choose to make the decision that's gonna make a difference in your life. Regardless to that storm, I would just have to say now, I never knew what God was, was preparing. I never knew a book would have come out of that situation. And so I say, if you ever find yourself in a storm, just say thank you. Thank you. And that's why this book, Majestic Prayer Meditation, is important to me to share because it does help you get ready for the next season. Uh, most people think of prayer as grandma in the back room crying out to Jesus. Because that's the only example of prayer they've ever had. And that's a great example. But what about you? How do you pray? Or do you pray? Do you even know what prayer is? What is meditation? Some of us have the wrong idea of meditation. We think, we've seen examples of meditation of someone sitting cross-legged and, um, <laughs> you know, don't, I'm not making light of that, I'm just using that as an example, okay? There's nothing wrong with that, that's where you are. But, meditation is nothing but going through a situation in your mind over and over again. And the Bible tells us clearly to meditate on the Word of God. Renew your mind with the walking of the water of the Word. So if you're worried about a situation that you're going through, guess what you're doing? You're meditating. So why not meditate on what's going to help you get through, like ice cream? I thought that was a powerful example. I've heard the story before, but I didn't hear that part. So. That's why my book uh, is so special to me. It says pen, paper, auto power. No time to shut your mouth, no time to be silent. His life story had to be told. No time to be a coward, he had to be Super Bowl. Some will whisper, some will stare. Some will tell him, don't you dare. Air troops laundry out. I said air troops laundry out, air it out. Let your inner spirit shout. Autopilot. Who's at the wheel? Dion Wingate. 
you know the deal. <laughs> Pen and paper, now set him free. Let him write and let him be. Be the man with powerful black ink. Never mind what society thinks. God put him on autopilot. God put him on autopilot. God put him on autopilot. Come on. The same thing that my dad wasn't there, they drove me to the streets. You know what I'm saying? And being in the streets, this is a product of the streets. But at the same time, I love being in this wheelchair. Been in this wheelchair 22 years. And one thing I learned about this wheelchair taught me how to think. In the 28 years that I was walking this earth, I didn't know how to think. I was destruction, distraction. I was everything other than what I needed to be. Mm -hmm. I was solid. Taking care of my little sister. You know what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is, in this wheelchair, what I love about it, I know how to think. I know how to make decisions. I'm not a reactor no more. I don't ex just explode because somebody might have stepped on my foot or somebody might have hit me and I'm ready to kill them. Now nah, we're going to talk about it now because I know how to think and I know how to use my mind and my brain the right way. You know what I'm saying? Instead of going to kill or hurt one of my brothers over the nonsense. Um, I just want to say um, I'm glad I'm here. Dion is my first cousin. He is my mentor. He's my rock. And I just want to say I love you for pushing me. You always push me. And you can see you push a lot of people that came out tonight. So what you're doing is great. I love you, cousin. describes the event of Dion's life. It is not about Dion. Believe it or not, this book is about you. It is giving you a chance to see through his sharing of very personal life experiences that it is all up to you and the choices that you make in life that define what happens to you and the future you decide to manifest it for yourself. And the Lord has definitely been in Dion's life. You can see I'm from Sanford. There were black and white libraries. For him, you are a part of history. For you to be sitting here tonight and having a black man. See, we just started reading books less than 200 years ago. But now we're at this point in 2018 where we're writing books. He's to be commended for his behavior at this point in his life and uh, not doing negative things because he could take, instead of inspiring kids, he could be taking them down a dark path. Amen. Mm -hmm. So you have to look at the God that is in here tonight, the God awareness that is what has done to this man. You have to look at the miracles in here. She's a miracle. He's a miracle. Mr. Wood Johnson is a miracle. But without the Lord, none of this would be possible. He brought us all here tonight for this special moment. I just can't take it no more. When the pressures of life are weighing me down, it causes me to act on impulse. And with my face, I carry a frown. But I must remember that attitude is everything, no matter what the devil tries to bring. For even in my going through, I must let God's praises ring. See, frustration can cause me to mistreat those who are innocent, when I should just go before the Lord and repent, saying, Father, forgive me. I cast my cares upon you. For Lord, it is you who knows just what to do. So when there's aggravation, frustration, temptation, whatever the situation, I know I'm just passing through because praise is what I do. And I owe it, Lord. Yes, I owe it all to you because I'm blessed and I have been saved by the best. You know, my life used to be a mess. I used to do ungodly things. Hey, I was trying to be like the rest, but now my life has changed, and I'm a new creature in Christ. Yes. I'm talking about the one who died, the 
the giver of life, one who doesn't indulge in misery or strife. I am blessed. See, there's no more roller coaster rides, no more ups and downs, no more hangovers, for now I'm heaven bound. I am blessed. You can call me high minded if you like, but that won't take away my knowing to do right, for in God's eyes, I'm a beautiful sight. I am blessed. Yeah, yeah. Blank, bare, basic, empty, simple, safe. They paint small boxes and basic hues of unthreatening colors on my canvas. And they smile and nod and reassure that this way is best, that you can be just like the rest, happily miserable. They paint with strokes that imply that my destiny will somehow get the best of me and be the death of me, but who wrote it? Did you give me this vision, bold with neon scent? Did you swallow this dream? Did you author this script? No. I define destiny for me. I define happiness. And what you believe it to be isn't quite what I had in mind. See, this morning, I woke up in the east. And before I could rest, before I could rest for the evening in the west, I came up with a name. A name for myself. A name for my journey. Queen. Goddess. She will be called Zuri, beautiful. Sana, a work of art. You see, I title myself for my magical finish and find strength in acknowledging that magic was never my start. So I'll speak for myself, and I'll speak for my own heart. And I will not slip away into the bleak background you have on display. Instead, <laughs> I will create another. More striking, more beautiful, more tantalizing than any work I've ever seen. Because who gave me this vision? Not you or your minions. Mm. Not this world or even my own mind, but it's a gift from the spirit who eternally lives inside. Mm -hmm. So I'll speak for my soul. With truth as my goal, I'll twirl and whirl in determination and self-love, and my brushes will meet the canvas like earth, embracing the heavens above and give to it colors. Deep as the ocean and bold as the horizon until the image on this canvas is unrecognizable, until it's new, until it's bright, until it's worthy of its own spotlight. From now until I've grown old, I'll be separate with an unorthodox destiny to hold, but I'll be smiling. And unlike the rest, I will be happy. For he who has the watch must keep the lookout. Stay on task. Stay the course, sorrow might endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. So you have got to stay motivated. You have got to stay motivated. Set an example for the children to follow, for we are the focus of their gaze so that they may inherit our strengths and not our weaknesses. We have got to stay motivated. We have got to stay motivated. Let us eat for strength and not for drunkenness. Sharpen our wills and stay motivated. Thoughts manifested into things, ideas becoming reality, thinking, creating, never underestimating the thoughts that create your dreams invisibly, thinking, creating, start creating what you want in life, start doing what you want in life, start thinking what you want in life. Become what you want. Pull your dreams into existence. God created the world with let there be. Look deep inside of you. Find your pathway that God put there with let there be. It is the thought that leads to other thoughts that manifest things. Things that are tangible. Things that your dreams are made of. Things that prospers you.
things that take you high to the mountain. How do we grab hold to these things that create our dreams? It is a thought, a simple thought, thinking, creating reality. I think, therefore I create. Inside of this book right here, Roger, just like you said, I was doing posts every morning from my journal because who I am and the life that I live, I have to journal. When I get inside of my head, I'm going to be dead. If I get back to the things that I used to do, I won't be able to stand in front of you. I can come off the top just like a poet. You know why? Because I know it. So anytime that I can do this, this is called Chronicles of Hope. I took 40 of my journal posts that people said, man, I like those, and put it in a book. I'm going to read one for you. Take a look in the mirror. If you are searching for the one person that can change your life, take a look in the mirror and discover yourself. Then and only then will you become free to understand you no longer have to be haunted by nameless fears. I had times in my life when I would look in the mirror and only imagine my life as a twisted, abstract painting. I had no idea who I was or why I was existing. And at this point in my life, I miss none of those feelings. I really want to share with you what was laid on my heart with this message. Allow your mind to be free without any hindrances. I must warn you at first, anytime you think of all the aspects of releasing your mind and looking to a mirror, it can be very uncomfortable. Trust me. In your life, you should be walking in a peace of mind and an absolute belief that you can make it. If you are feeling empty on the inside and feeling like you just don't fit in or you just don't have the strength to look in the mirror, well, let me help you. Get by yourself and have your mirror experience. I'm sorry, something on The reason why I chose to write this book was to inspire people not to be afraid to create their own dream here on earth. As I look back on my life, I realized that I had been fighting the fight that destiny was in. The moment when I realized I had no control over anything was the moment I started to feel alive. Throughout my life, I always had a sense of peace whenever situations seemed to be unbearable. But now I realize that the sense of peace I was feeling was a spiritual awakening. Throughout every obstacle I overcame in life, I did not realize I was gaining spiritual strength. I'm sharing my life experiences in hopes of encouraging others to break the chains of fear and to live out their purpose. I am living proof that the past does not determine your future, but the past plays a big part in the strength of your faith and integrity. As you read this, you will realize that you can change what you perceive as negative situations that may have occurred in your life into positive information that can change someone else's life. And I just want to say to all of us in here, when you think about am I my, am I my brother's keeper? Mm -hmm. I am. Mm -hmm. Are you your sister's keeper? Mm -hmm. You are. All of us have a responsibility to each other mm -hmm. in this world to be there for one another. And I think I was the one that, um, he was the one, he laid on my floor lots of nights. There were nights that I was scared for him and scared for the family because I didn't know what he was going through. But all I knew is I had to be there and walk him through it. This book is about manifesting what you desire. But it has to start with changing the poor decisions that are created in the life you don't want. Dion, I mean, my dad. <laughs> <laughs> their choices in life and transform what they create for themselves. He is an agent of change who is committed to motivating and inspiring people because that is what inspires him. I'm gonna get straight to the point to discuss the book a little bit. So in the beginning chapter I talk about born to fail. 
because even though the odds are against you, don't mean you have to succumb to them. So when I say born to fail, I lost my mother when I was four. Born into poverty and lost all the security I'd known. And this is at four years old, which was my brother, my sister, my two sisters. So that was the only security I had known. I had lost all of that by four. That's why I decided to stay born to fail. You know, and by 12, I was addicted to alcohol pretty much. I was drinking just about every day by 12. So now we have this lost young man who succumbed to alcohol who still hurt from the loss of his mother that he never even dealt with. So by 17, I dropped out of school. So now I'm undereducated, dealing with mental issues, and just lost, and an alcoholic at this time. And between 23 and 30 years old, I spent that in and out of mental institutions in jail. But I didn't share that with y'all just to uh, say, oh, poor me. Um, why did this happen to me? Because uh, my sister, my aunt, everyone who here who know me, I always took accountability for whatever I did. So if I got caught going, if I went to jail, I might not tell the judge that I did it. <laughs> but they know, if they came and asked me, on the visit, did you do it? I might not say it over the phone, because they're listening to the phone. I gave them that nod. <laughs> so, by 35, I had a stroke. So during that stroke, I learned a lot. I was so used to overcoming obstacles then that the stroke taught me how to overcome, gaining my balance back. And just, I had short-term memory losses. And this is kind of weird right now. This is something I could never imagine doing just standing and talking in front of people. Donna, you know, she pushed me a couple of years ago. And, um, you know, so, like the quote that I uh, like to use that's from Oprah It said, turns your, turn your wounds into wisdom. So, no matter what you're going through, you can overcome it because you, look, all you guys came out here for this. Y'all came out here for this alcoholic for this thief, for this con artist, for this undereducated black male. So um, I think someone said, be careful when you judge, because you never know. Amen. You never know. You know, because uh, the same institution I was in, mental institution I was in, and some of the people I deal with, guess who I consult? <laughs> That's who I consult. So, I mean, uh, and I, 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 I took a couple of notes and uh, like I said, like education is very important. Education and knowledge. But it does you no good if you don't use it. It's sort of like having gym equipment but never working out, just looking at it. <laughs> so, and all of us are educated, believe it or not, our experiences. I get paid off my experience. I have a doctorate in the streets and in reality. Ooh. I learned how to be a critical thinker because I had to think. That's how I'm here talking to you now. Mm -hmm. And I was forced in a position that I had to create. Um, I always felt like, as far as jobs, which is good, I mean, everyone needs to work to support their family. I always felt like I didn't need no help being poor. Mm -hmm. I was always a risk taker. I'd rather take the risk of creating a business myself yeah. where I have the opportunity to become rich or wherever I, wherever I want to be because I'm already rich. I'm a contributing that spiritually and mentally. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking about material wise. So I didn't have to, I don't need no help being poor. So, uh, you know, so therefore I always took a lot of chances.
What I'm saying that is persistent and consistency, that'll get you whatever you want. You know, it's going to open up a lot of doors for me. And no, it's really easy to accept. Because, you know, you get told a lot of no's, it's going to be that yes. And that yes will change your life. All it takes is that one yes. It don't take no more. Here, we're all born to learn how to die. So besides material thing, what legacy are you going to leave behind? See? So that's just food for thought. My legacy already here is auto power. Nothing mama died and I felt so alone. So alone. Daddy died, I was all on my own.